It all comes down to this. Everton Football Club has undergone a massive transformation over the past three seasons under new ownership and new manager Graham Potter. It's been a successful period of transition and has culminated here in the final episode, not just of season three, but of the series itself in a European final. So we will, of course, be playing our final game of the season against Newcastle in full. But first, let's look back over the season and hand out some awards. We were soundly beaten by Arsenal in the round of 16 in the Carabao Cup. And we made the same stage of the FA Cup before we were knocked out by West Ham. But it was another solid finish in the Premier League, finishing in seventh place, just a point behind Aston Villa in sixth and three points behind Man United in fifth. We very much had a chance of finishing slightly higher, but we lost to Crystal Palace in our penultimate game of the season and drew 0-0 with Wolves. So our chances of playing European football again next season depend entirely on the outcome of the Europa League final. There were some big arrivals and departures from the club. Jared Branthwaite left for Chelsea for a fee of 45 million and he's actually been one of their most capped players in the Premier League this season, playing a massive 31 games and contributing a goal as well as three clean sheets. He has also been playing European football for Chelsea, but they were knocked out in the round of 16 by FC Porto. Amadou Onana also left the club, and he has also been playing a big role for Arsenal, featuring in 27 games. Didn't manage to score, but he did contribute two assists and seven clean sheets. Onana too has featured for Arsenal in Europe, this time in the Champions League, but there he was knocked out of the competition in the quarterfinals by PSG. Onana did feature in the final of the UEFA Super Cup, but Manchester City ran out 3-1 winners. But Onana does have a trophy to his name, victorious in the final of the Carabao Cup 2-1 over Liverpool. Beto has really settled in at Aston Villa now. He's played 35 games this season, scoring 16 goals and 5 assists, so he's really rekindled the form that we saw from him in season one. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, however, continues to fade into obscurity. He scored three goals in eight games, to be fair, but he's struggling to get onto the pitch for Manchester United. In terms of statistics for our own players, Asan Diaw, with a fantastic season, led the way for us in terms of goals and, I believe, assists. 11 goals, six assists in 31 games for the forward. Gerard De La Feu returned to Goodison Park with a bang, eight goals, one assist in just 24 games. Luca Waldschmidt, too, proved a very shrewd signing. We signed him on a free, and he contributed 10 goals in the form of eight goals and two assists. 10 goal contributions for Anton Stack as well. Seven goals and three assists. Five goals for Matthias Cunha. A bit of a disappointing season for him. But Alan San Maximan also made a huge impact when he arrived in January. Seven goal assists in just 13 games. Lewis Ferguson contributed four and four. Three goals and two assists for Reese Nelson. The same for Scott McTominay. James Tarkovsky from set pieces contributed three goals. Lewis Dobbin was a bright spark off the bench. Three goals and one assist. Five assists for James Garner in an injury riddled season. Popped up with a goal as well. Maxim de Kuyper has also faced some injuries. And Jordan Pickford somehow came up with two assists this year. That big left boot dropping balls in behind for the likes of Sam Maximan and Diaw to run onto. Diaw was just as lethal in the Europa League as well. Six goals and one assist in eight games. Five and three in nine games for Matthias Cunha. Sam Maximan another four goals, another assist in just five games in the Europa League. 4-2 for Ferguson, 3-2 for Scott McTominay, matching his Premier League tally. Anton Stack with three goals and an assist. A couple for Luca Waldschmidt, James Garner, Isaac Torre came up with a couple of goals from set pieces as well. A goal for Gerard De La Feu, Ben Godfrey, Reese Nelson and Lewis Dobbin. But De La Feu with three assists, Reese Nelson with a massive five. And having seen those statistics, it's not going to be a surprise to anybody if Asan Diaw's name is called on awards night. And indeed, the first award of season three does go to Asan Diaw. He was voted fans player of the season. A massive 17 goals and seven assists in the time that he spent on the pitch. And his dislocated shoulder means he is going to miss the Europa League final. Graham Potter's selection for player of the season went to Anton Stack. He contributed 11 goals and 4 assists and was a really solid presence in defensive midfield. Whilst Alan San Maximan takes home the award for player's player of the season. In just 18 games since January, he completely 
transformed the nature of the squad, not only with his attack and flair, but with his infectious personality, contributing nine goals and three assists. And we also have a couple of awards to give out for the contributions made by players over the course of the series, not just in season three. Maxim de Kuyper takes home signing of the series, again voted for by the fans. When he arrived, he cost us just nine million pounds and was just a 74 overall. Here in season three, he's an 80 overall and is valued at 19.5 million. He's made a real difference on the left-hand side. An attacking threat, a defensive presence. Perfect fit for Graham Potter's 3-4-3 formation. But the most improved player of the series goes to Nathan Patterson. He won the same award in season one. That was just for one season. Here he wins the award for the entire series. At the beginning, he was just a 72 overall. He's grown 11 overall in that time to a massive 83. And his value has basically 10x, 4.3 million he was worth at the beginning. Now he's worth 39 million. And the final award for fans player of the series goes to Jordan Pickford. 15 clean sheets and two assists in this final season, but he's been a steady presence in goal for the entire series. And he's really etched his name in the history of the club. This award was voted for exclusively by members of my Discord channel. If you haven't joined already, there is a link in the channel profile and there is one final award to give out for the best viewers on youtube and that of course goes to all of you the support on the channel for this series has been absolutely immense we were at just 700 subscribers when i posted the first episode and now we sit at a massive 3.1k it was just three months ago that this series started so the growth on the channel has been incredible so a big thank you to everybody who has watched who has liked who has subscribed who has left a comment any way that you've engaged or interacted with the channel is hugely appreciated. I know there are lots of you that want the Everton series to continue, but I think three seasons is a good length. I want to try my best to end the series on a high with a Europa League final win. And I do have a couple of new series already lined up as well that I think you're really going to enjoy. So beginning this weekend in tandem with the kickoff of Euro 2024, we will have a Euro series with England starting on the channel. Also beginning this weekend, we will have a new career mode series running concurrently on the channel as well. A realistic MLS career mode series with New England Revolution. With all of the rules and restrictions from real life, we'll have wage caps, we'll have designated players, and we'll be kicking the series off with the 2025 MLS Super Draft. So thank you so much for all of your support. I'm so glad you've enjoyed the series and I hope you enjoy these next two series as well. But now let's get into the Europa League final. It's been a suspiciously easy run so far in the Europa League. We absolutely walked our group finishing top, not losing a single game. In the round of 16, we overcame Manchester United with ease, a 6-2 aggregate victory. Same in the quarterfinals, 6-1 over RC Lens. The semi-finals was just as easy, 5-1 over Ajax. But we now face Newcastle United in the final. We will, of course, be without Asan Diaw. He's dislocated his shoulder. But the very congested fixtures list at the end of the season means we pretty much have our starting 11 and not too much beyond that. So many reserves are completely shattered. We have Lewis Dobbin on the bench, Scott McTominay, even James Justin and Isaac Torre are a little bit short of fitness, as is James Tarkovsky, who starts at centre-back. So fitness certainly is an issue here. Hopefully it's going to be as much of an issue for Newcastle as it is for us, but we're going to have to try our best to get this game over and done with in 90 minutes, because if it goes to extra time and then potentially even penalties beyond that, I'm not sure we're going to have the legs to keep up. Newcastle look to be in slightly better shape than us. Nick Pope starts in goal. It's a back four of Hakimi, Badia Shield, Gabriel and Barr. So plenty of pace to keep up with Sam Maximan and Reese Nelson. Locatelli, Zubamendi and Bruno Guimaraes are the midfield three. Whilst Harvey Barnes, Anthony Gordon and Alexander Isak start up front. As for Graham Potter's 11, he goes with Jordan Pickford in goal, of course. A back five of Patterson. Danzo, Ahmed Hodjic, De Kuyper and James Tarkovsky gets the nod at the centre of defence ahead of Isaac Torre. Lewis Ferguson also gets the nod alongside Anton Stack in centre midfield. Reese Nelson, Alan San Maximan support Matthias Cunha up front. So without further ado, let's head up to the commentary box for the last time in this Everton takeover rebuild and see if we can end the series on a high with a European trophy.
So we are up in the commentary box at Anfield for this one. That's right, Anfield. Of all the neutral sites that could have been chosen for a Europa League final, Anfield is the one that is selected for us. I kind of don't hate it, though, because what an irony it would be for us to win a, Euro uh, a European trophy at our rival's home stadium. Uh, a kind of sweet irony when Liverpool have had the edge over us so often in this series to go to their place and overcome Newcastle to win the Europa League would certainly be an ideal way to end the series. There's a lot of football yet to be played though. And I'm kind of nervous for this one. Kind of a mix of excitement and nervousness that seems to be translating onto the pitch because it's been a little bit of a shaky start. A couple of loose passes along the back five to begin. So we'll look to settle down as quickly as possible. I have been warned in the comments that some people have had the same experience as I have. The knockout stages of European competitions feel incredibly easy until you get to the final. As Reese Nelson turns a header towards goal from a Maxim de Kuyper cross. Wasn't even expecting Reese Nelson to win that in the air, but he did. Nick Pope saved com comfortably. But that was a, a very good effort from Reese Nelson. Very, very strong in the air. Not something that we ask of him on too frequent an occasion. But he came up big there. Reese Nelson opposite Alan San Maximan, who of course is against his former club today. The club where he really made his name in English football. And he lifts the ball into the path of Maxim de Kuyper. Falls to Mateus Cunha, who opens the scoring 10 minutes in. What a start to this game. We certainly have settled in. Couple of shaky passes along the back line early. But Maxim de Kuyper already causing problems for his former club. He scored against them earlier in the season. He didn't celebrate then. Be interesting to see how he reacts if he gets on the score sheet today. Because this is an altogether different kind of fixture. But he's already contributed to the move that has opened the scoring. Matthias Cunha putting the ball into the back of the net. Six goals in ten matches in the Europa League. He's had a bit of a tough second season at Everton. Has been marred somewhat by injury. And when he has been on the field, there's been a, a slight lack of form. He's not been terrible by any means. But he certainly hasn't been the player that he was last season. And there are still... Or oh, there is still plenty of football left to be played. We've taken the lead, but it is only 10 minutes into the game. And Nathan Patterson looks to be injured on that right-hand side. We won't put the ball out of play because... Newcastle won't give it back to us. So we'll have to keep an eye on that injury. Newcastle pressing high. They're going to have to do that early in the game. After having gone a goal behind so early. Good persistent play from Reese Nelson. Alan San Maximan can't win the header. Ahmed Hodgic does. But only into the path of Harvey Barnes who controlled it with his hand. We have all the momentum so far. We are getting a prompt to take Nathan Patterson off the field here. I'm not going to do that just yet. We will see how the injury progresses and develops. Reese Nelson has the ball at his feet on the right-hand side. Nathan Patterson outside in first-time cross. Anton Stack lurking in the box, but cleared away by Newcastle. Recovered and recycled, though. That's one thing that we have done very well with this particular system and particularly with this set of players. We are quick to recover the ball when we lose it. Big switch of play to Nathan Patterson once more. But that sails over his head from Anton Stack. 
And Newcastle will gain possession with a throw in, but Reese Nelson steals it away. Alan San Maximan arriving, ball at his feet, edge of the box, doubles the lead. And we will see if Alan San Maximan celebrates this time. And he puts his fingers in his ears, blocking out the noise from the Newcastle fans that he has just scored in front of. And Nick Pope has to be disappointed with his effort there. I was certain he was going to parry that one away. Didn't manage to get to it. Looked to be a comfortable save. But instead, the ball flies past him into the back of the net. And 20 minutes into the game, we have a commanding lead over Newcastle. Harvey Barnes looking to change that, but can only run the ball out of play. Do we sit back in our defensive game plan already? I think no. Poor pass, Sam Maximan just gives it to Anthony Gordon, who of course is against his former club as well. I would say Sam Maximan probably made more of a name for himself at Newcastle than Gordon did at Everton. Perhaps Everton fans would disagree with that. Good intervention, James Tarkovsky. Pais Cunha finds Lewis Ferguson and then eventually Nathan Patterson. Kevin Danzo picks up the ball in defence as well. And Mateus Cunha just spreads it wide to Maxim de Kuyper, who has a bit of space on this left-hand side. Sam Maximan makes the run up ahead. Maxim de Kuyper just delays the pass for a moment or two before he finds Sam Maximan. And we are just in a very comfortable position now. We can keep the ball for as long as we want, really. I mean, Newcastle are pressing high, but the system that we are employing is 3-4-3. That's a poor header, Maxim de Kuyper. The 3-4-3 is very much set up to recover possession quickly and to retain possession when we have it, especially along that back five when Nathan Patterson and Maxim de Kuyper drop in. And we, of course, have the central three in defence. Anthony Gordon cutting in off the left-hand side, though. Good challenge, Anton Stack. Finds Nathan Patterson, who is still nursing that injury. We may have to take Nathan Patterson off at some point here in the first half. For now, though, he'll drive forward and look for Maxim de Kuyper on the edge of the box on the far side. He finds just a Newcastle man, Baddy Ashiel at the back. Who switches the play to Barr on this left-hand side. Reese Nelson with a couple of rash challenges, and that's probably going to be a booking for Reese Nelson. Barr unhappy with the challenge. Same goes for the referee, and it is just a yellow. I thought I saw a flash of red for a moment there. And my heart leapt into my throat. But it is just a booking. Deserved. And the right decision, I would say. Nathan Patterson contests Anthony Gordon for the header. Don't think he won it, but Gordon can't keep the ball in play. And I have no idea why Lewis Ferguson has just made a run directly behind Kevin Danzo. That was the least useful place he could have chosen pretty much on the entire field. Sam Maximan. Little bit of space. Wriggles past to Kimi. Badia Shield comes across to deal with it, though. Isak. Kuiper. There to meet Harvey Barnes. Cuts out the pass well. Just about finds James Tarkovsky. It's a little closer to the foot of the Newcastle man than I would have liked. And I, I think we are going to have to take Nathan Patterson off here. He's going to have to make way for James Justin, I think, because he is just not running off that injury. Newcastle pressing even higher now. They just have a line of five, and Alexander Isak up ahead of them, trying to win this ball back. Just Nelson plays it in behind for Lewis Ferguson, who just takes the ball down. Again, we can just retain possession here. That's poor. That's poor Lewis Ferguson. Bit of a miscommunication between Ferguson... And Nelson. And I think it might be wise just to drop into our defensive game plan for the last 10 minutes or so of this first half. Just to make sure we maintain this lead going into the second. We'll make a change here before the Newcastle free kick as well. 
Which I real shame, but Nathan Patterson does have to make way for James Justin, our most improved player of the entire series. And his night in this Europa League final is already over. Matthias Cunha skips away from Gabriel. Can he find the bottom corner? No, he can't. Puts it wide. What a chance for Matthias Cunha to double his tally for the game and really put this final out of sight before half time. Doesn't manage to find the bottom corner though. But he ate Gabriel alive. And he was the last man, Gabriel. Newcastle committing so many bodies forward. Already feeling like the game is slipping away from them. Good intervention, Lewis Ferguson. We do have Scott McTominay to come on in centre midfield as well to defend our lead. And what is Gabriel doing? He is asleep. He is asleep. It's beaten initially by Matthias Cunha. Can he find the bottom corner this time? Blocked by Badi Ashil. Good recovery. But what was Gabriel doing? Not sure who that was taking the throw in. I guess it was Barr over on the left-hand side. Tried to find his centre-back partner. And he just watched the ball sail over his head for some reason. Tarkovsky brings it down. Finds Sam Maximan. Reese Nelson in the box but cleared away. And held up by Alexander Isak. Anton Stack there though. And Sam Maximan picks up the baton. Reese Nelson again at the back post. Gets a good run across his man. Stack brings it down. Strikes towards goal. This time it is saved by Nick Pope. And cleared away eventually by Newcastle. Nice little chest down from Alexander Isak. And Anthony Gordon has a chance to run at our defence. We've done a really good job of keeping those wingers quiet for Newcastle. They are the biggest threats. That is where the main danger comes from in this Newcastle system. We've done such a good job of keeping both Anthony Gordon and Harvey Barnes quiet. Newcastle grown into the game a little bit to end this first half though and Gordon is into the Everton box. Good challenge by Kevin Danzo though. And James Justin hooks clear and Matthias Cunha hopefully can just see out the remainder of this first half by clearing the ball upfield and trying to pin Newcastle back a little. Anton Stack can't quite win it back. Lewis Ferguson trying to do the same. Rhys Nelson needs to be careful already on a booking, but there goes the referee's half-time whistle. And we do have a 2-0 lead at half-time. The Everton fans very much enjoying their evening. Badia Shield, the Newcastle players, the Newcastle fans, not so much. Really good start to the game with Matthias Cunha opening the scoring. Disappointing. Performance from Nick Pope not to keep out Alan San Maximan's attempt. But we'll certainly take it. So back out for the second half here at Anfield. And we'll look to put in a similarly good performance here in the second half. Did such a good job defensively in that first half. Newcastle really barely had a chance. Jordan Pickford didn't make a save in that first half. And if we can do the same here in the second, obviously we're going to walk our way to victory. That was such a good intervention by Ahmed Hodzic. And Alan Sam Maximan is away. Badi Ashil facing him down. Sam Maximan doesn't quite have the pace to beat Badi Ashil. But he is able to lay it off to Matthias Cunha, who again puts his shot wide. Venom a strike. Nick Pope was pretty much motionless. But it does flash wide. And hopefully we don't come to rue that missed opportunity. Because a third goal at the very beginning of the second half would pretty much have secured victory for us. But we will continue to try and keep possession here in the second half. We will try and lure Newcastle onto us. I mean, they have to press high. They have pretty much no choice in the matter. But Isak has pressed high and has won the ball back for Newcastle. This is exactly what we can't afford. Really good challenge, Anton Stack, which the referee actually doesn't like. We cannot afford to be giving the ball away like that. And it falls to Newcastle in the box, and the shot, thankfully, falls to Badia Shield. 
and it goes harmlessly wide. If that was a maybe a, an Alexander Isak or an Anthony Gordon, we might have been in trouble there. But thankfully, it's fell to the Newcastle centre back, and he gets it all wrong. Hakimi comes to meet Sam Maximan. And Ahmed Hodgic trying to drop the ball in behind for Maxim de Kuyper to run onto. But again, we see possession to Newcastle. Harvey Barnes sets it into the path of Barr. James Justin there to meet him. Finds another Newcastle man, but what an intervention, James Justin. And Reese Nelson can come away on the right-hand side now. This is exactly how we need to play this second half. Invite Newcastle onto us, try and hit him on the counter-attack and... Put the dagger into the back of the net and into Newcastle United once and for all. Somehow Bruno Gimaraes manages to squeeze through the challenge of both Kevin Danzo and James Justin. It was Ferguson with a fantastic challenge and can he come away on the right-hand side now? Matthias Cunha, the only man up in support. And Lewis Ferguson can't hold it up for long enough. Newcastle back the other way. Again cut out. Again cut out by Newcastle though. Back and forth game to start the second half. Possession being turned over frequently and sloppily it has to be said. Really good ball into Alexander Isak. There's Gimaraes. Jordan Pickford with a comfortable save. Gimaraes didn't quite get the pace on the shot that maybe he would have liked. And probably that would have taken to beat Jordan Pickford. And Ashraf Hakimi is being beaten all ends up by Alan San Maximan. And as we approach the hour mark here in the final, we still have that two goal advantage. Ahmed Hodzic, James Tarkovsky, Lewis Ferguson finds James Justin. He finds Reese Nelson, can't find Lewis Ferguson. Locatelli. Anton Stack there to meet him. Hakimi on the right-hand side for Newcastle. Back to Locatelli. Anthony Gordon now. Really good passing move this from Newcastle, but what an intervention by James Tarkovsky. We have defended so well today. Almost inevitably, we have had an Everton foot there to cut out the final pass from Newcastle. They've had some decent enough passing moves, but they just haven't been able to thread the needle in the final third. But again, we just cannot keep possession here in the second half. Inviting pressure from Newcastle. Hakimi once more, high up the pitch, lays it into the path of Anthony Gordon. Back to Hakimi. Locatelli and Hakimi is offside. Again, sloppy from Newcastle in the final third. Good build-up play, but sloppy in the final third. Now would be about the time that I would be looking to make some changes. However, we have so little on the bench that there really aren't too many changes that we can make. And our starting 11 is pretty much the 11 fit players that we have. Scott McTominay is on the bench. He'll probably make an appearance at some point in this second half. Lewis Dobbin is also on the bench and fully fit. He may not make an appearance, though. Good save, Jordan Pickford. Really nice effort from Alexander Isak. On the half turn and on the half volley. But Jordan Pickford equal to it. And Anton Stack can lay it into the path of Lewis Ferguson. Matthias Cunha with a run up ahead of him. James Justin now. Back to Matthias Cunha. Who cuts inside. Beats Gabriel again. And just keeps possession. We don't need to force the issue with a two-goal lead. Lewis Ferguson tries to drop it into the path of Matthias Cunha. It was a really nice effort. Didn't quite pan out, though. Alan San Maximan drifts too far away. To be found by the Everton defender. And I think next time the ball goes out of play, we will make... Another change, potentially two. Thinking Scott McTominay on for Lewis Ferguson. Maybe nothing beyond that. 
James Justin trying to stop the cross. Alexander Isak with a shot blocked by Armand Hodgic initially. But Isak does put the ball into the back of the net with the rebound. And suddenly Newcastle are back in the game. Very few clear opportunities. And it was a really good block by Armand Hodgic initially. But look at that finish by Alexander Isak. There is the narrowest of gaps to place that ball. Armand Hodgic there to block it. James Tarkovsky the same. And Alexander Isak finally does thread the needle. Puts the ball into the far corner. And now we just have a one goal advantage. So we will make another change. Lewis Ferguson making way. His night is over. Scott McTominay to come on in centre midfield alongside Anton Stack to try and see out these final 15, 20 minutes or so. Of course, another goal to re-establish that two-goal lead and secure the victory would be ideal. But of course, we do have to make sure that we don't concede again. Conceding a second goal would be disastrous. Not only because, of course, we would lose our lead and potentially lose the trophy, but because we have so few players on the bench that can make a difference in extra time. Danzo, Tarkovsky, Ahmed Hodzic, Maxim de Kuyper. Sam Maximan with a run in behind. That's a rash challenge, though, from Anthony Gordon. Not punished by the referee with anything more than a free kick. But potentially that would be a booking. Danzo finds Tarkovsky. He finds Cunha. And then Scott McTominay, who's going to have a shot from range, blocked by Gabriel. And out for an Everton corner. Scott McTominay, not only a defensive presence in midfield, but an aerial presence from these kinds of set pieces. So we will do our best to find him in the centre of that mess of bodies. Don't manage to find him. Do you find Kevin Danzo, though, with the second ball? And Ahmed Hodgic does well to win that in the air and nod it down to Kevin Danzo. Sam Maximan doesn't find McTominay. Thought that was a, a pretty simple pass for Sam Maximan into the centre midfielder. But he gets it wrong and again sees possession to Newcastle and invites a bit of pressure. Anthony Gordon, Locatelli and Anton Stack is there and we can come away on this left-hand side with Maxim de Kuyper. Badi Ashiel there to meet him. What do we have in the box? Not too much at the moment. So we will just keep possession with Sam Maximan who tries to find Matthias Cunha and can't. Sam Maximan has been the biggest culprit for giving the ball away in the last five or ten minutes. We had a real opportunity to take some time off the clock there. And Sam Maximan instead just invites some more Newcastle pressure. Gabriel up to bar. Into the path of Bruno Gimaraes. James Justin forces the ball backwards. But Newcastle still press forwards into the box with Gordon. What a save, Jordan Pickford. And we need to get rid of this. And Maxim de Kuyper doesn't. And instead, Anthony Gordon beats Ahmed Hodgic. Anton Stack there to make a really good challenge once more. And eventually, Anthony Gordon puts the ball out for an Everton goal kick. What a save by Jordan Pickford. That would have been so painful for these Everton fans. I was going to say travelling Everton fans, but this is almost a home fixture, despite the fact that we are at our rival stadium. Big sweeping ball out to the right-hand side for Reese Nelson. But that would have been the most painful way to lose our lead if Anthony Gordon would have scored the goal that did it. James Justin can't quite get into the box, but... Newcastle give the ball right to Matthias Cunha. Skips away from a couple of Newcastle players. Kenny finish blocked by Locatelli. And there's five minutes left to play. And we are holding on to this narrow one goal lead. Newcastle trying to find a final clear cut opportunity to get an equaliser. Ahmed Hodgic can't win it back. Maxim de Kuyper out to meet Anthony Gordon. Akimi trying to find space to cross and Jordan Pickford can claim and we just need to find 
Everton feet, we've given it straight to Anthony Gordon. No! He was offside! He was offside! He was offside! I thought we conceded the equaliser. I mean, Jordan Pickford throws it, rolls it right to Anthony Gordon. Who plays it back in to the Newcastle substitute. Oh, doesn't play it in. Chips the ball towards the goal. And the referee and linesman have determined that, I think, is it Lozano? has obstructed the goalkeeper and or Arnel Armand Hodgic. Potentially, they may have reached the ball and cleared it off the line is the decision. But I, I thought we had conceded the equaliser and we have been absolutely bailed out in the last moment of the game. Jordan Pickford trying to roll the ball out to Maxim de Kuyper gives it straight to Anthony Gordon. Chips the ball, a fantastic finish, it has to be said. Chips the ball into the net. And we are bailed out by an offside decision. And four minutes to go. We have a throw in in the Newcastle final third ish. And if we can just get this ball into the corner, we may be able to see out these final moments. Oh my God, I cannot believe that. I thought we'd given the I thought we'd given the game away. And I mean we had. We had given the game away. Get there, James Justin. Doesn't quite get there. Two minutes to play. Can Newcastle find one final opportunity? Or can we see out these remaining moments? Anton Stack wins the header. What a header. Just an innocuous, seemingly, usually insignificant header. Just winning possession back from the goal kick, but... That could be the header that secures this Europa League trophy for us. Sam Maximan pinning Baddy a shield back. And if Newcastle don't get the ball up the field soon, the referee's final whistle is going to blow. And the referee's final whistle does blow. And Everton are Europa League champions. We did our best to hand it to Newcastle at the end there. Jordan Pickford, what a stalwart he's been for the club. What a stalwart he's been in these last three seasons in particular. And it was almost disaster for the Everton and England number one. It was almost a, a tragic moment as the former Everton man, Anthony Gordon, puts the ball in the back of the net. But the referee bails us out and we will lift the trophy. Matthias Cunha, Alan San Maximan, Reese Nelson. What impacts they've each made at the club. And it is going to be the man who almost gifted Newcastle with the equaliser. Who's going to lift the trophy. Captain Fantastic for Everton over these last three years. James Tarkovsky still there, of course. One of few Everton players who have lasted the entire rebuild. Nathan Patterson, another, but he, of course, had to go off with that injury. Gerard De La Faye returns to Goodison Park. He's in amongst it. And to finish the entire series, we lift the Europa League trophy at Anfield of all places. What a ride has been. Three incredible seasons. And I think this is the perfect place to leave it. So again, thank you so much for your support on the series. And I hope you enjoy the next ones as much as you and I have enjoyed these ones. But that'll do it for the Everton Takeover Rebuild. Hope to see you in the next one. Take it easy.